You know, uh, I had no intentions on recording a video tonight, another one. I've been a little inactive lately, uh, just been reading a lot and uh, kind of been more interested in uh, things going on in my personal life rather than making videos. But I always will make, always will make videos and I have, might have my ebbs and flows, but uh, I wanted to see if there was anything going on of significance. So I turned on television and boom, breaking news, long time Cuban leader Fidel Castro has died at the age of 90. And I think that's pretty significant and that warrants a video. Uh, from a little bit off with dates or whatever, I'm going by memory and I haven't really read too much, you know, uh, to study for this one. But I think uh, Fidel Castro was born in 1926 and uh, earlier in his life I don't think he showed any uh, inclination that he was going to be a historical figure. Uh, I think he was a mediocre student. Uh, he lean more toward, if anything, he would thought he might grow up to be maybe a great athlete. He was very good in athletics, uh, but eventually uh, he got into uh, political activism. Uh, he was a very anti-imperialistic uh, in his uh, philosophy. Uh, he became uh, a Cuban nationalist. Uh, detested U.S. intervention within uh, any Cuban policies, and uh, he was also a lawyer when he was younger. And um, being that he was anti-imperialist and a Cuban nationalist, of course, this uh, caused him to oppose the then uh, powerful dictatorship of I think his name was it was Fulgencio Batista. Uh, he was a dictator of Cuba uh, throughout the 1950s. And uh, I believe, uh, I might be off of this, but I think uh, Fidel Castro and his uh, followers tried to overthrow the Batista government once. I think it was sometime around 1953, I think it was. And for a while it looked like, like Castro and some of his followers were going to be executed, but instead they were imprisoned. And eventually, they were let go, uh, much to uh, Batista's chagrin years later. Batista was so powerful that he just thought that they didn't pose a threat uh, after that period of time, that their, their spirit had been broken. But Castro and his uh, men grew in number, and fo his followers grew in numbers. And I think it was in 1957, uh, when they felt they were strong enough uh, Castro and his group of followers, uh, which included his younger brother Raul Castro and Che Guevara, by the way, they fought and uh, successfully uh, toppled Fungicio Batista's regime using guerrilla tactics. And once they began to uh, see that they uh, posed a serious threat to Batista, uh, I think they talked a lot of Batista's men into turning against uh, uh, Batista and when that happened around New Year's 1959 uh, that's when Batista fled uh, fled the country and uh, took <laughs> multiples and hundreds of million dollars with him by the way from the country's treasury and uh, Fidel Castro was now the leader of Cuba and he revealed himself to be a communist and you know the United States had this country at the time that Eisenhower was president and the United States had this country that was in their pocket uh, the mob had a country that was in their pocket uh, and at the time the United States government and the mafia were probably the two most powerful forces in, in the country so there you had this country and this leader, Fidel Castro, that, that now is allied, allied with the USSR, Soviet Union. Of course, we were in the Cold War at the time. And this scared the United States because now you have this country, Cuba, which is only 90 miles away from the coast 
of Florida. And Eisenhower eventually gave the okay after a while. After a while, the United States was, for initially, I think the United States was neutral with Castro. But when it was found out that he was a communist and that he was, quote unquote, like Sarah Palin would say, palling around with Khrushchev, uh, this angered the United States. Not to mention the fact that uh, I think Castro initially uh, taxed <clears throat> the casinos that the mob owned in Cuba. But then eventually he just destroyed all the casinos, jailed some mobsters, kicked out the uh, the uh, higher ranking mobsters. And um, matter of fact, I think he jailed uh, Santo, uh, Santo Traficante. Uh, who became the mob boss, later on the mob boss of Florida. But anyway, of course this angered the American Mafia. And so of course, for a long period of time, the United States and the mob tried to kill Fidel Castro using various techniques. Uh, some of them silly. Uh, I think they tried to use an explosive cigar to kill him. They tried to uh, uh, lace, what was it, a cigar or something? with a chemical that would cause his beard to fall out. Uh, they tried to use a femme fatale to uh, poison him, but at the last moment, I think the young woman got cold feet and was unable to feed the poison to him. And, uh, of course, in 1961, there was the infamous Bay of Pigs fiasco, uh, which was supposed to overthrow the Castro regime, but instead it failed epically. And uh, some people think that uh, failed fiascos uh, planted the seeds for the eventual assassination of John F. Kennedy. Uh, and then in 1962, you had the Cuban Missile Crisis, which uh, initiated because of the fact that the United States government got intel that said that the Soviet Union had uh, nuclear missiles which were not only on Cuban soil but they were pointed directly at the United States and because of that tensions mounted and escalated or de-escalated no escalated not de-escalated escalated into uh, the closest that we've come to nuclear Armageddon but ultimately Cooler has prevailed. And Fidel Castro eventually would serve as Cuba's governor, uh, Cuba's uh, dictator, excuse me, for nearly 50 years. He survived Dwight D. Eisenhower. He survived uh, the Kennedy administration. He survived the Johnson administration, the Nixon administration, the Ford administration, the Carter administration, the Reagan administration. The Bush, the elder administration, the Clinton administration, and served uh, for most of the Bush younger administration. Uh, ill health uh, eventually caught up with Castro in the mid 2000s. I think I remember reading he had something called divertilicus or divertilicus. Uh, I think I'm killing the, destroying the pronunciation of that illness, but I think it's something like divertilicus or divertilicus or something like that, uh, which is a very painful stomach problem. And he resigned uh, from president in 2006 and totally stepped down from leadership in 2008 and ceded control to his younger brother, Raul Castro. Uh, in recent years, he uh, had been writing, uh, but keeping a low profile. And he'd been slowly in more and more failing health. Uh, but he died tonight, and now he belongs to history. And therefore, when he belongs to history, he belongs to me. Uh, I think Castro has, he'll always be, it depends on who you're talking to. I think if you're talking to most of Americans, most of middle America, and if you talk to people who are of Cuban descent, he's hated. Matter of fact, I just uh, saw something uh, that 
said that Cubans, when I was uh, looking earlier, said Cubans in Miami were celebrating upon learning upon his death. And um, some people saw him as a brutal dictator. Uh, there was that uh, mass exodus of Cubans during the Carter administration. It was around 1979, 1980. I think a million. Uh, he basically said, well, if you want to, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to be here, you can leave. And I think like something like a million people left uh, this mass exodus of Cuban immigrants. I hate to say this, but I have to say it because it's true. I'm not trying to denigrate, denigrate Cubans, but uh, this mass exodus also included undesirables. And this led to a spike of uh, crime in Florida and drug trafficking. And of course, that eventually led to the creation of uh, a classic in Hollywood, Scarface. Now, once again, I have to say, I'm not talking about Cuban Americans. I'm just talking about something that happened in fact, okay? Because when you let out a million people, some of them are going to be some bad seeds, all right? That's with any ethnic or racial group. But anyway, having said all of that, Fidel Castro had his defenders. Number one, the United States can be very hypocritical when it came to people who they considered undesirables or evil. Fidel Castro, I thought, was a person who never seemed to me, at least, to be a cruel and inhumane dictator. He was not a sociopath. He was not a psychopath. Uh... True, he did imprison many people, and I think there were some people that he had killed, but it wasn't, he was not a monster to the point of Saddam Hussein, who the United States allied with in the 1980s during the Iran Iraq War. And who I think is far worse than Ayatollah, who Khomeini ever was. Okay? We allied ourselves with Joseph Stalin during the World War II. Uncle Joe, we called him. Well, Uncle Joe was evil, <laughs> killed 20 million people, at least, possibly more than that. It would have killed millions more if he wasn't failed by a stroke or was poisoned uh, at the time of his death in 1953. Mao Zedong, longtime leader of China, we allied ourselves with him. Nixon famously opened relations with China in 1972. We've been friendly with that nation ever since. Mao killed at least 60 million of his own people. China has a history of human rights violations. But we look the other way with them. The United States was very friendly with Romian, uh, Romanian dictator, uh, I forget his first name, was it Nikolai Consoclu? But Consoclu became a brutal dictator. Uh, he became a victim of uh, being in power for too long. At first he was a more fair dictator, but then he became more brutal. Cracked down on uh, uh, civil rights with, as far as citizens, control, citizens. And then he became a victim of his own uh, brutality. Uh, as there was a wave of anti-communism and a, a wave of democratic reforms in Eastern Europe in the late 1980s, he was brought down by that. But so the United States has a long history of aligning themselves with brutal dictator, uh, brutal, brutal dictators. The only difference I see, and I have to be brutally honest, is if you're a brown colored dictator, with some exceptions, but if you're a brown or black colored dictator, you're evil. If you're white, and especially powerful, especially if you have nukes, then we look the other way. Then we differentiate between, oh, well, he's just an authoritarian leader. Uh, you know, he's just a totalitarian leader. Uh, but but those that is necessary for his country. But But Castro... Him being a totalitarian leader, he was the worst leader of all time, supposedly. 
So Cubans, Americans, and Cubans, they have every right to feel the way they do. They grew up in a nation that I have no relation to uh, as far as like being able to, I mean, living in that type of environment. So I can't judge. But I do say the United States government that they've been very hypocritical when it comes to Fidel uh, Castro. And tonight, Fidel Castro is dead at the age of 90. May the judging of his life and legacy begin.